Now, the depreciation of the Ghana CD has mostly been blamed on over-reliance on imports. Analysts of the economy have and continue to argue that as long as the country fails to produce the basic commodities it imports, the local currency will keep losing value. President Akufo re-emphasized this notion yesterday when he met with some businessmen in Accra. The, the difficulties that temporary dislocations in the currency bring about are something that all of us have. It, it touches all of us, and there's a need for us to find solutions. But I'm thinking that our public discourse should also begin to focus much more on some of the structural problems involved in, in, in our currency than we have, you know, yes, uh, there, are, there are moments when you, you can you can fault or, or, or look askance at the manner in which the currency is being managed at any one given time. But there are structural problems that we so far do not articulate loudly enough, in my view. What are these structural problems? We live in a country where we are overly dependent on the importation of things for our daily sustenance. Things that we can produce, we continue to import them. And at the same time, we don't generate enough exports. We need, because it, it is the issue on the, on the current account, the persistent deficits in our national income statistics on current account, that is the responsibility, that is what, what gives rise to the frailty of our currency. This is the matter that we should, all of us, understand as the origin of the real fragility of our currency. Now, this school of thought is definitely not new. It is more or less a cliche now. And that's why Vice President of Imani Africa, Kofi Bentel, is advocating a paradigm shift. Speaking on news file last Saturday, Mr. Bentel posited the situation will remain sane if managers of the economy continue to focus on the manufacturing industry rather than the service industry. We all need to find the reasons why our city does what it does. You know, I sometimes like I argued against this proposition that it was about exports and imports, that we import everything. Da, 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 da. That is post World War economic thinking. And the world has changed so much that that is no longer valid, but people still talk about it. And recently I had the opportunity to tell other people that now my theory has been proven. Last year we had a trade surplus. Our inflation is low, but the city is still going off. So, whatever in our body as an economy is causing this temperature, it's not that. The U.S. has the largest trade deficit in the world. The dollar is very stable. They import everything, and now they are fighting everybody. Mm. And apart from everything Donald Trump has done, their trade deficit has gone up, but the dollar is stable. That is proof that it is not that theory only that causes this temperature, which is now going to cause all those other things. Mm. Now, here is what I humbly, respectfully suggest. We have economists in this country. We have departments of economics. We have analysts. We have think tanks. We have people who should take this issue and analyze it. Let's find what causes our city to behave this way. Because if we don't cure this temperature, it will start affecting our brain. And that's what you're talking about. It starts killing everything. We need to study it, understand it, <coughs> then we can competently manage it. Sharply opposed to that position is Executive Director of the Institute of Democratic Governance, Emmanuel Akwete, who was a co-panelist on that same show. Now, he said economies like Ghana cannot thrive on the service industry like the U.S. Kofi Bento's point that it is not uh, heavy import dependence and that we don't, but he didn't also tell us what. <laughs> it's not the only factor. <laughs> it's a critical factor. Um, because if you, you can't compare us to the U.S. I mean, U.S. is no longer dependent on commodity exports, raw commodity exports. And in this case where, uh, go look at the excitement over the money coming to Cocoa Board, you know, and how that is going to salvage us mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And you ask yourself if it delays. And what does Cocoa Board do? It's not a, a significant part of what the exports are not even processed. So um, here we are. 
our imports of everything, almost everything we eat is imported. But that means that until we industrialize and diversify this economy, industrialize doesn't mean we should build import substitution industries today and so on. But I think if we can add greater value to what readily earns foreign exchange to us, our cocoa, our gold, our timber, and so on, and, and probably we could also look at the finance and how we spend this money. There used to be a time, I believe, we need the fiscal responsibility law, but probably we should go further and see what we can do as other countries have. As part of our discussion on the economy and what really is causing our CDs depreciation. I'm joined on the phone now by a development consultant who has wealth of knowledge in the service industry. He's Ebenezer Inua Ama to share some thoughts with us. Good morning, sir. Thank you for your time. Good morning. We've heard from the president. We've heard from the vice president of Imani Africa. And we've also heard from Mr. Kofi, uh, sorry, Emmanuel Akwete. The argument is... Does encouraging manufacturing still remain the major solution to saving our city? Okay, good morning. And uh, with the president finally, his excellency finally publicly saying that he is acceptable this, and with the minority also speaking about this, I think it's a good thing that we are doing this national discussion. So let me come to your question. Absolutely. And I'll give a number of reasons why I think that encouraging manufacturing is still a major, if not the major solution to saving the city. Number one, manufacturing historically has been proven to be a major path to development. And so when you create high value manufactured goods, the people use is then that you make more money out of it. You also export. Number two, Manufacturing has been the foundation of global power. So let's look at the Chinese. The Chinese were not powerful globally until they began to manufacture goods and they began to export the goods. So this is also correct and true historically. Number three, global trade, and I mentioned trade. Trade, which is a very important component of services, trade is actually based on manufactured goods normally, not necessarily services. Again, let's look at China. Let's look at Dubai. Almost all the, um, the goods that we are using here in Ghana are coming from China, they're coming from Dubai. And they've made manufacturing a very important component. Maybe five or four, and maybe finally. Services depends on manufactured goods. So again, retail, wholesale, they are all based on selling manufactured products. So let's go to Mokula, let's go to Abbasokai, let's go to Tudu, where we have a lot of trade going on. They all sell manufactured goods. And finally, manufactured goods create jobs. Yes, services create some amount of jobs, but services create some few jobs. Manufacturing tends to create a lot of jobs. So to answer your question very directly, does manufacturing, uh, should it be encouraged? as a major uh, solution to saving our city. Yes, mm -hmm. I would say absolutely. Ms. Emma, even though you've um, argued that largely we can make a difference if we focus on manufacturing and not service entirely and how the two work together, would you say that we have explored our service in industry enough to, you know, help that contribute to our economy as a nation? A very good question. You see, service or the service industry is very, very broad. And we can look at it from a continuum of the lower ends, like those who are doing strict vendoring, et cetera, to those who are providing high-end, high-value technical services. Uh, so, for example, if you look at education, for example, our universities are training high-value uh, 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 people. Now, over a period of time, uh, foreigners are coming into our university system doing their education. So, for example, the University of Ghana Medical School, okay, they are providing services in terms of education, and people are benefiting from it. And then we are also making some money from, 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 from that. And so, at a very
very high level of services. I think that always has some contribution to make. Okay, so beyond medical tourism, um, we also need to explore um, developing very high level engineering services. So I want to see, let's say, could you mention that, or let's say, I should say, Amal, or let's say, early MFA, engineering services doing construction work in China, or doing construct, construction work in Dubai, or any other part of the world. Like, if we are able to diversify our service industry at the higher end, or at the very high level of services, then I think we'll be making a lot of progress, rather than just doing buying and selling. Mm. Do you think as a country we are overlooking or looking down on how much the service industry can, to a certain extent, help our economy and maybe the strength of the city? The service sector can and will make some contribution. I don't think the service sector in itself can solve the problem. Now, the city depreciation problem basically is as a result of one, a number of reasons, which we all know. I'll just mention about two or three. One is low export. Okay? So we are doing more imports than we are doing exports. So if we are going to use a higher level end of services to bring in money or to even export our services, then that can be very useful. So the second problem is fiscal indiscipline. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I, must, I must say this. Fiscal indiscipline. We are spending much more than we are generating. So if we can cut down expenditure, okay, that will also be useful. I think the third reason is that there's some wastefulness in the system. So for example, we have a fleet of land cruisers for almost all ministers. It's a rabbit. If we can cut down on some of these things, then we, we can save the city a little bit. Now, the solution, in my view, is we should make sure that we have steady flow of foreign exchange from export. If it means exporting technical services, it means that uh, existing export promotion institutions must also step up their, I mean, their game to make sure that we sell Ghana properly and then we help those who are also trying to I mean, export. I believe that a long-term solution lies in our ability to plan long-term so that any government that comes to power will build upon what others have done in the past and then we can really move on. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, we have to end it here, Mr. Ama. Uh, thank you very much for your time and sharing your thoughts with us. Ebenezer Ama is a development consultant sharing with us his thoughts on how to strengthen the Ghana city.